Welcome back into another one, uh, literally just back from the final practice session of the year and uh, how quick has that gone? Absolutely crazy. It feels like, and I, I, again, I'm repeat myself, it feels like five minutes ago I was just talking to you about how we just got the first couple of nights out of the way. And that's it now, Friday's done. Uh, I've had a good day really. It's um, There's a few incidents this morning, uh, nothing tonight, so fair play to everyone out there, good quality riding. Uh, yeah, it's just gone like, it just goes by like that, and I know it happens. It happens every year. You just you start practicing, and then a couple of days go by. And next thing, boom, Friday, it's gone. Um, I'm probably rubbing on a bit because I've just come in from doing a, a quick lap, and uh, obviously, times against us for everything this week, isn't it? Times against the organisers, the riders, the marshals. Times against everybody. And times against me trying to get these videos out and not like I'm under any kind of pressure but I know how much pre people appreciate getting stuff like you know as close to uh, the time of it happening as possible. So I thought you know what I'm just going to literally flip the camera on. I've just literally got home five minutes ago. It's about ten past ten, uh, ten past nine at night. Uh, we finished up a little bit earlier because uh, the mist has come down on the mountain and so we only got one lap in for the sidecars uh, this evening. But they got a few in this morning, they were first out this morning. I should say this afternoon really, it was lunchtime. But yeah, just a few little incidents. Um, Craig Neve probably the worst one. So he looks like he's hurt his knee. But I, it could be one of those where they might be able to just sort of patch him up and he might be back out later. Um, you know, tomorrow he might even be racing. So I don't know until we obviously find out uh, how much damage he's done. You're not really going to know. But good news, Rob Hodgson. I think from what I was hearing, the, the live feed caught a bit of his accident. And uh, he was back out tonight. I saw him on his twin and his super sport. So um, good to see him back out there. And then Patrick Hoff is a newcomer. And uh, we talk about newcomers, don't we? And it's been hard again this year because there hasn't been a lot of practice time. So, you know, they may be taking slightly bigger steps too soon than, than they should be. But it's so easy to make a mistake when you think of all those corners you have to negotiate. And, Every lap you're going a bit quicker and it's so easy to just get one wrong and he's slipped off at Schoolhouse. That's the fast left going into Ramsey before the straight, before you break for Parliament Square. You know, it's a fast corner. It's speed we're going through there, maybe, I don't know, 120, 130 miles an hour maybe. And um, can't tell exactly what he's done, but I know that he got up and walked away. Like We didn't even get called to that incident. And if you told me yesterday there'd be a crash at Schoolhouse, I'd be saying, well, we'll definitely be going to that. But he got away with it. So... Hopefully he's okay in terms of his bike. Um, I'm pretty sure. Well, I'm not. I'm not positive, but has he just brought his super bike, the BMW? I'm not sure if he's brought a super sport or a twin. So obviously his uh, ability to get out and race tomorrow is all about has he got the machinery and not not himself because he's fine. Um, back to the sidecars. The crows are flying, and uh, I made that statement the other day saying. No chance of any lap records this uh, this year because the conditions just aren't quite there. But um, Callum and Ryan, you see, you think about what happened last year with Callum's injury after the, the little incident in the first night of practice. They must have just rode so conservatively and their bike sounds so good. Like that thing just sounds fast and it looks fast and they're going fast and they're into the 119s now. So, yeah... They obviously they had a cruise round tonight, just like a 115 bed and stuff in for tomorrow. So uh yeah, I'm really rooting for them tomorrow. I really want the crows to pick up their first win. Um such a good such a good pair of lads. Such, such, they're such nice lads. Uh they've always got loads of time for us. Like sometimes we'll go down and have like a like a post practice drink with those boys in their in the in their tent after you know, after a session. And um you know they're not they're not too uh, too big to say no. You know they're just they're just good lads, and obviously they're local, and we're all local, and we're rooting for them. And on the bigger bikes, uh, looks like Michael and Hickey and Dean are all just like, trading blow for blow again. Um, but David Dodds joined the party this year, hasn't he? On all bikes, so I saw some real quick sectors off Michael. Like he was up uh, on every sector, going to Ramsey on his big bikes on everyone's times and then he somehow lost the time over the mountain so Michael might be sandbagging a little bit he might have a little bit more left in it and then Hickey's gonna put a real quick one in tonight hasn't he so that might be a true reflection of, of pace but we're not gonna know until you know the race starts and we actually see what everyone's got you know you just you just don't know really 
but I'd say the speeds are definitely faster than I thought they'd be this year. Um, just just goes to show again the quality of the riders, the quality of the machinery, the quality of the tyres and everything else that goes with it. But yeah, everyone's on it. The time being so tight for everybody, it's you know it's tight for us too. And uh, I'm going to go through the bike now because we've got to go through them each day. Mechanically, we've got to check them. Again, I've explained as scrutineers, as, tr as technical officials, we're responsible for making sure that these bikes are in as good a state to go on track as the race bikes are. So I'm going to do that, get out my leathers and do that now and, and get it ready. So tomorrow morning, I don't have to rush around doing it. I'd rather just get it, get it done now, get a good night's sleep, get up, good breakfast, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do it all again tomorrow. Um, a bit of an update on how new travel marshals go and Richard he's yeah, he's getting into it um, it's a really difficult one for him because nobody wishes for an incident do they nobody wants a crash um, but at the same time you need to sort of have your first one to you know get out your system and, and find out how it all works but I suppose it's been nice in a way because there's, there's loads of other stuff that goes on with, with being a TM you know in, in terms of the way the radio communications work and just just the procedures you have of moving to sectors and where you should be and like I say how you communicate and there's still loads to take in before you even start dealing with incidents so it's kind of been nice in a way that he's been able to do that and you can see as we've gone through the week he's getting more and more confident with everything and we're getting a few more laps in now because you've got to get used to the bike and like I said in the last video practice weeks just as much for us to practice to get up to speed as it is for the riders um and yeah so it's he's he's getting there and he seems to be enjoying it and like on a personal level i I'm get on great with him and like i'm gonna get him on because he's got some really interesting bits to talk about and it's it's really great to see the job again through a fresh set of eyes and see how somebody sees it technically sees it from the outside and um yeah, so it's going to be interesting, and you know he he was do, this time last year he was competing at the TT, so his his reference from like competitor to TM is so fresh that I think it'll uh, it'll, it'll make for some interesting topics. So I spoke to Rich about it; he's up for it. We will get him on, and um, we'll get that for a, a video after after race week's finished, and we've, we've we've got everything done. So we'll do a bit of a summary then. But yeah, it's another really busy day tomorrow. Uh, really, really long, and. I'm definitely not complaining, you know, I, I love all of this and it's to a point where the more of it the better, obviously the, that, the, there is a point of that when you've been out there for 8, 9, 10, 11 hours, it, it, you know, it does get tiring and you're doing it day after day but another big day tomorrow, Sunday's not quite as big in terms of how long it is so hopefully that won't be too bad. Um, but yeah, just looking forward to the racing now. Looking forward to seeing actually what people have got and, and seeing where it goes. But David Tard, I think. I don't know why he just looks just looks really confident, especially coming off the northwest. You know, he, he looked really good, and he was you know, he was trading um, race wins and, and positions with with Glenn Irwin, and they're basically in a league of their own, weren't they, for for quite a lot of it. And uh, it just looks like he's carrying that here. It just looks really good. But yeah, it was just a quick update just to talk about you know a few of the incidents what we've been up to um and uh, a little summary of how everyone's getting on not that you need me to tell you you can watch it all, all over the internet and all over the tv live if you want um a slightly different thing for us tomorrow isn't that we'll do one of us will do a film collection lap and you'll see us stopping around the course between races picking up um the camera tapes it's just the quickest way of getting the stuff back here ready for the guys to do their production ready for to get it out on telly but apart from that it's pretty much the same again so uh i'll get you an update in a few days thanks again